As the president and members of Congress from both parties consider their options regarding Iran and the ever-growing capacity of its unstable and fanatical leaders to produce a nuclear weapon, we must contemplate the answers to many large questions that go well beyond just the current political realities on the ground. First and foremost among them, does involvement in this global hotspot meet the test of being in America's national interest in a clear and compelling way? The answer to that revolves around another question. Exactly what is the full scope of our obligation to Israel, our ally, since its establishment 64 years ago? For Iran represents a credible threat to Israel's very existence. Are we compelled to take the initiative in defending Israel or to finish any incursion that they start? With the virtual certainty that Iran would react to an attack by closing the Straits of Hormuz through which more than 20% of the world's oil supply must pass, it will almost certainly require the U.S. to take military action to reopen it, lest the world's financial markets be deeply affected. America has sent our military into war 16 times since becoming a nation and committed troops on numerous other occasions. Should the fact of our combined 18 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan and the mixed results in itself influence our decision on whether to involve ourselves in another war? An aggressive sanction regime is currently underway to discourage Iran from continuing to pursue its nuclear ambitions. If these efforts fail, should America once again make war with another nation? Unless directly attacked, why should we go to war? Then there's the issue of the balance of power. Given that nine nations, including Israel and Pakistan, have nuclear capabilities, does Iran present a significantly more clear and present danger to our republic with a nuclear weapon? The fundamental nature of human and governmental relations doesn't change, and thus the wisdom of George Washington more than 200 years ago still rings true today. In his farewell address, America's first president warned of the dangers of permanent alliances and rivalries between the U.S. and foreign nations. He said such relationships inevitably lead to unnecessary wars due to a tendency to blow minor offenses out of proportion or wars which have no justification and no benefit to our nation beyond simply defending a favored nation or make us vulnerable to undue foreign influence on the American people and government. Our history is replete with examples of all of the above. So as we consider the full range of options regarding Iran and Israel, let us ponder these questions deeply and commit only to what is in America's clear and compelling national interest, or we will surely suffer unintended consequences, if not sooner, then later.